In this video, we're going to talk about canine psychology and the basic information that you need to know on how a dog's brain works in order to successfully create a strategy and communicate rules and expectations that your dog will be able to accept. And the most important thing that you need to know is your dog needs to have a positive association with engaging with you if you want them to be obedient to you. If I want my dog to work for me and to drop what they're doing in order to pay attention to me, I need them to be confident that engaging with me is always going to be a good thing. If I stop them from doing something that they were over threshold on and I scold my dog the moment that they do give me their attention, my dog is only going to want to not engage with me in that scenario in the future because they're predicting a bad outcome. They go, oh my God, if I engage with you after I do something naughty, you're going to make me feel bad about myself. Therefore, they're less likely to engage with you. The reason for that is your dog's not able to conceptualize what they did a moment ago is the reason that they're doing it. And if they don't do the thing they did a moment ago, you wouldn't react that way. That's a higher level of intelligence than a dog is capable of. A dog lives 100% in the moment. So we need to understand, accept, and strategize how we're going to communicate with our dog based on the knowledge that our dog isn't thinking about what they did five or 10 seconds ago. They're thinking about what are they doing right at that moment. So if my dog stops doing an over threshold action and I, after they stop, am scolding them for it, they're not thinking you're scolding me because I did this action. They're thinking you're scolding me because I stopped and paid attention to you. I shouldn't stop and pay attention to you in the future anymore. This is the argument between balanced dog training and positive only dog training. Positive only dog training argues that your dog isn't going to associate the communication in a positive way and therefore they're not gonna engage with you if you punish them for the behaviors. What the actual reality is, is they are not going to react positively to you if you don't understand when to give them the consequences and when to not give them the consequences. I only give him the consequences of his actions after I properly communicate what he should do and I do it in the moment that he's doing it. Acknowledge the good behavior. He's going to want to engage with me after he goes to the bathroom. He'll check in with me more. Awesome. What most balanced dog trainers do is they use physical communication as punishment and that is incorrect. If I need to use physical communication with my dog, I want them to still associate it in a positive way. So I can't, oh, he did something naughty, boom, consequence, I try and punish or harm my dog with the tools that I'm using. I need to communicate with my dog and still have physical communication be associated in a positive or at the very least neutral way. As an example, if my dog keeps going, doesn't notice, hits the end of the leash, I need him to be confident that the right answer is come back into a heel because that means if he gets into a heel quick enough, he's going to get a treat. And I mark that behavior and tell him, yes, you were correct. That was going to happen with my marker. Now our dogs can only associate positivity with a one thing at a time rule. So if I feed him and mark at the same time, he's not going to predict that because I clicked that behavior he just did resulted in a treat. It's the exact same thing as me just giving him a treat without clicking. I need to do things one moment at a time. So I need to mark his behavior. Then I need to give him a treat. They're, they can happen, you know, moments touching, but they can't happen overlapping each other. Same thing when I'm learning, when I'm teaching verbal commands. So if I want him to do verbal commands, I need to say them then do the visual command, then mark, then reward. So front, then I move, then I mark, then I reward, then I release. Okay. All of them need to happen in their own separate moment because my dog can only conceptualize and uh, absorb one thing at a time. Multiple dogs can't multitask, meaning if they're not doing an XYZ action, they're not thinking about XYZ action anymore. So to recap, my dog needs a positive association with engaging with me in all aspects, even quote unquote punishment sort of things. I need physical communication to be communication, not punishment. If I want my dog to engage with me, 
off of physical communication and I need to do things one mo at a time. If I'm doing active obedience, I need to do everything one that one moment at a time. So Samson. Front. Center. Heel. Okay. And they can be quicker than that. Off. But I did need to make sure that I know that you guys noticed that I didn't do them at the same time. I wasn't multitasking. I was doing one moment at a time, which is hard for humans to do, but necessary for dogs to do.